and we have it on a remote string. Really? So, this is remote string? It was, that's all I could afford. You're a YouTube millionaire. We could only afford two feet of string. <laughs> just squint. I'll just squint. I've got ballistic protective glasses on. Okay. And I'll flex. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flitter Mouse. In this video, we're going to finally see if we can get a chain reaction with a column of 10 556 five, rounds. Tau Flitter Miller. <laughs> I've created this simple rig which will fire a BB remotely, striking the first primer of the round. The round will explode, driving the first bullet forward, striking the second primer, setting it off, and creating what we're calling a sequential chain reaction. Quite a number of viewers told us that we had to have a space between each round in order to give the bullet enough time to come up to speed. And they were using analogies like cars crashing into each other and stuff like that. So we decided not to put any space at all because, hey, if it fails, then we could always go back and put spaces between the rounds. A ton of people said that the primer on a 5.56 is just too hard. So we're just going to defy them too and use 5.56 for this test. Probably the second most common prediction from viewers was that a BB is too round to set off that hard 5.56 primer. It's just impossible. Nothing's going to happen. By far the most popular prediction was that only the first round would actually go off, not setting off the second one, and the tube would just blow up. So let's see what really is going to happen. Now in the event that we actually get a complete chain reaction and stuff actually flies out the front, we'll put this watermelon there to capture anything. Today's shooter, or string puller in this case, will be a very brave man named Greg. So let me shut up and let's do the test. More than a baby. I don't Whatever. see much. Look at that thing erected. Yes. So what do, we, what do you have in the end of the barrel there? That is a little piece of a primer that blew backwards and lodged itself in the barrel. You can see right there. <laughs> what, are the, what are the chances of that? Rifle primer that came straight back and wow. lodged itself in there. And then if you see here, shredded the cardboard tube, sh shredded the cardboard base, blew out all sides of our... Uh, it, it broke this loose. Yeah. That was like that. Blew out all sides of the uh, crystal, of the... Uh, tube we found out here in the dirt as far as 25 yards away and then most impressive is these shards of brass that just explode. is the primer still in that one the primer is oh, has been that's important to see there look at the look at the primer primer has been fired off as if it was in a rifle on this one that's even that's a hard primer strike actually sure. but one thing we were noticing is the primers blew out on some of these others and, and show the bullet tip that one did not go off apparently this one, the bullet has seeded itself even deeper. Yeah. That's a lot, it takes a little bit of force to do that. Yeah, but as you, as your viewers can tell, the bullet tip has actually been impacted, like driven in like a nail. So it slammed forward into the round in front of it. And then if you look over here, oops, our evidence is blown away. So much for trial. Uh, if you look over here, the this 223 caliber round actually has a blunted tip where it flew forward and slammed into the round in front of it. Yeah, a lot of force there. So does this one. We found this one about 25 yards away also. Back and to the left. But all these... And amazingly, all my cameras didn't get hit. Look at this sheet of metal that this thing just blew Yeah, we've open. been searching for about 15 minutes here. 
again, there's another, uh, another primer that detonated perfectly along with this one. But most of the primers, it appears, blew right out. That's all we found, though. This, that one's gone. I think, wait, wait. Oop, there's the bolt. That tube is just, we, we knew the tube was going to go. <laughs> that was without any doubt. If, it, if anything happened, the tube was going to explode. We didn't want a metal tube because we didn't want metal shrapnel. Shrapnel. This was bad enough. This, this flew back towards me where I was pulling the string. Actually went over my head, came down, raining down past us with almost no force. And as you can see here, what we're calling crime scene investigation, this is cast off. <laughs> All of that debris, we're assuming, we haven't cut in here yet in surgery, but all of that Look, debris. Point, point that towards the camera a little bit. Look at that perfectly That's, round hole where that tube yeah, was lined up. We, well, I was gonna, I wanted to save that watermelon for lunch, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll, let's go ahead and cut it open. Yeah. And then blasted all that stuff right back out here, yep. which, which we'll see on. Do a little surgery here. A little surgery. You're pretty good at that. This melon has been uh, anesthetized. So one oh, thing, look, 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 look. One thing we're seeing right there is your spring and tube. That's what shot into it. Yeah. Okay, Just, pull that sucker out. That might be the only thing that we can find in there. Can you see that? Last week I posted a video showing the rig and how I was going to do things. And I asked viewers what their predictions were. And the only way to get an honest answer out of somebody, especially on the internet, is to not show the results. So we had a, about 2,500 comments. About 99.9% .9 of the comments predicted absolute failure and no chain reaction. And I'm not exaggerating. From 556 primers being too hard to be set off to BBs not being able to set off primers to you know all the energy blowing out the back there was a lot of thought that went into these comments based on people's you know experiences in life or maybe watching Mythbusters and stuff like that. Now of course I had no idea what would actually happen once I you know set this thing up and we shot it. It worked on the very first try which was amazing to me and it worked exactly the way I thought it would in my head. And usually I'm wrong I'll be honest with you. There was absolutely no intention to make anyone look foolish, stupid, or anything because, hey, this has never been done before and there's just a lot of variables and things that can actually go wrong. But I definitely want to thank everyone who participated, were brave enough to put down their thoughts, their predictions, using logic. Uh, there was a lot of thought going on here and I thought this was a really fun experiment that I could actually involve my viewers and put yourselves in my shoes for once. Many times I am just blown away and amazed at some of the stuff that occurs in my videos. And I want you guys to be amazed too, not be that annoying guy that said, Oh, I knew that was going to work. I knew that cube-shaped slug was going to fly with such precision. Yeah, right. Nobody wins a prize when they're right, and nobody gets points taken away when they're wrong on the internet. Trust me. So hopefully you were still surprised at the results. Don't come back and say, I knew we'd have a complete chain reaction because only two people out of 2,500 actually predicted that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Oh, no.